In this video, I'm going to teach you how to use Flexbox with Elementor. Now, currently the homepage of my website still uses sections and columns. So if I wanted to change it to the Flexbox model and spice it up a little bit, I could create this. And then in just a few clicks with Flexbox, I could change it to this or even to this. Hello, I'm your host Casino. I'm the Digital Alchemist and many of you asked me to create tutorials about Flexbox so today is the day. Now I think that the best way of learning is by doing so let's get started. But before we start let's take a look at what we're going to build. So if you look at my current website and if we go back to this one we can see that the main section is now on the right hand side but this time we're using Flexbox so with just a few clicks I can go from this to this so a different layout. And then just a few more clicks and I can go to this. Now for the tablet and the mobile is going to be vertical. So here's the tablet version and here is our mobile version. Now here on top, you can also see a beautiful navigation. We got a call to action and we got our menu. And when you click on it, it opens a full screen menu. But more about that later in this video. Okay, but why Flexbox? Well, Flexbox is a more modern way of building websites. It uses a different CSS model and it gives you much more flexibility. Hence the Flex in Flexbox. And now that it's part of Elementor, it's just going to future-proof your websites. Actually, I've decided that from now on, I will build all my future websites with Flexbox, but also for my own website. So it means that I have to redo my website completely when I have time, but I wanted to redesign it anyway. Now back to why Flexbox. Well, there are plenty of reasons, but let me just give you two. So for the first one, so this is my current website, my current homepage. And in a nutshell, this is the structure I'm using with sections and columns. But for this layout alone, just to have this column on top of the other one, I had to add some CSS code. So let me go to advanced, custom CSS. And this is the CSS code I had to add. So it's not a lot, but I know some of you don't want to use CSS. Now with Flexbox, I can do the same layout, even more complex, but without any code. As I said, it's really, really flexible. Now, reason number two, in this specific example, if I want to have a different layout, it's going to take much more work and much more CSS code if I want to start tweaking things, if I want everything to look good on the desktop, the tablet, and the mobile. Whereas with Flexbox, I just duplicated my main container and then with a few clicks, I had this layout and then a few more clicks, I had this layout. Still without any code, much more flexible. In just a matter of minutes, I got some new layouts. Okay, so what do you need to complete this project? Well, apart from WordPress, you will need Elementor. You don't need the pro version for the layout, but you will need it for the navigation, but more about that later. But for the layout alone, you don't need Elementor Pro, so you can just go with the free version. But of course, if you wanna get Elementor Pro, you find a handy affiliate link in the description below. Next, you want to install a WordPress theme. I'm using Astra, you don't have to use Astra, you can use whatever you want, but if you wanna follow along, you may as well install Astra. It's free, it's beautiful, it's lightweight, and it's working great with Elementor. Next, you wanna to go to Elementor settings, click on the experiments tab, then scroll down to where it says Flexbox container, make sure it's set to active, and then scroll all the way down and click on save changes. Okay, next you want to go to pages, click on add new and create a new page and then click on edit with Elementor. Okay, first of all, you want to open the navigator. So click on the icon and here is our navigator. Next, you want to click on the plus sign and create a structure with two containers. And with our main container selected, you want to go to layout and where it says box, you want to change it to full width. Next for the width, you want to go all the way to 100%. For the minimum height, you want to click on VW and type 100. Now, bear in mind, I'm using a transparent header. So if you're using a regular header, you may put the VH at, I don't know, 19, 95. You have to play with those values. But for this tutorial, I'm using 100 VH. Next, for Flexbox, the direction should be horizontal. For Justify content, we're not going to select anything. We're going to leave it at default. And for the align items, we're going to use stretch. Now that is for the desktop version, but let's click on the icon and go into tablet mode. And this time is going to be reverse column. So column reversed. Justify content should be in the center and align items should be in the center. It's going to be the same thing for the mobile, but by default, it will pick what you set for the tablet. So let's go back into desktop mode. 
Next, for the gap, you want to make sure it's set at zero. Next, click on the advanced tab. And for the margin, you want to type zero all around and padding, same thing. And it's going to be the same values for the tablet and the mobile. So you can just leave it like this. So let's save our work. Okay, next in the navigator, you want to expand our main container. And then we have two sub containers. So the first one, we're going to rename it container two blocks. And the second one is going to be container one block. Now let's select the container two blocks. The width should be 33%. And then in tablet and mobile mode, it should be 100%. Now let's go back into desktop mode. Let's select our second sub container. So it's container one block. And this time the percentage should be 67%. And let's go back into tablet mode. And this time, for the tablet and the mobile, you want to select percentage and type 100. Okay, let's go back into desktop mode. Next, once again, we want to select our container two blocks, then go to the layout tab. So the content width should be set to full width. And for the flex box, the direction should be set to vertical. Then the justify content should be set to start and same for the align items, start. It's going to be the same thing for tablet and mobile, so you can leave it like this. Now for the gap, you want to type zero. Next, you want to go to the advanced tab and you want to type zero all around for the margin and the same for the padding. And once again, it's the same thing for tablet and mobile. So you can leave it like this. Next, you want to click on the widgets icon and then you want to drag a new container that you're going to put within the first sub container. So in case you are confused, we are within container two blocks and we just added one sub container. Let's rename it container top. Okay, so with container top selected, you want to go to the layout tab. The content width should be set to full width. And for the minimum height, you want to select VH. And for the desktop, we're going to set it to 50 VH. But now let's go into tablet mode. And this time it's going to be 25 VH. It's the same thing for the mobile, so you can leave it like this. Okay, let's go back to desktop. And for Flexbox, it's going to be vertical. Justify content should be at the end and align items should be at the start. And it's the same for desktop, tablet and mobile. So you can leave it like this. Next, you want to click on the style tab and you want to select either a color or an image. I'm going to select an image and I'm going to pick this one. Click on insert media and where it says repeat. I'm going to select no repeat. And for the size, I'm going to select cover. Next, I'm going to click on background overlay, click on classic, and I'm going to give it a color. So pick any color that you want. And as you can see, by default, it's at 0, 0,5 of opacity. Next, I'm going to click on hover classic. I'm going to pick the same color, but this time it's going to be 0 0.7. So when you hover over it, you can see the difference in shade. Okay, next you want to click on the advanced tab. And for the padding, I'm going to unlink the values. And for the desktop, it's going to be 60 top, 40 right, 60 bottom, and 40 pixels on the left-hand side. Next, I want to go into tablet mode. And for the tablet, I'm going to unlink the values. And this time, it's going to be 40, 40, 60, 40. And then I want to go into mobile mode, unlink the values. And this time, it's going to be 0, 20, 30, 20. Let's go back into desktop mode. And next, you want to click on the widgets icon and I'm going to drag a heading and then once again, and this time I'm going to drag a button. OK, so I've styled the heading and the button, but of course, feel free to style it however you want. OK, we are making progress. OK, so let's save our work. And then within the navigator, let me zoom in. You want to select container top. Then you want to right click and hit duplicate and we're going to rename it to container bottom. Let me zoom back out. And as you can see, now we have both blocks or both container, actually they're sub containers on top of each other. So now with our container bottom selected, we want to go to the style tab then click on background overlay and we want to pick a different color. So I'm going to pick this one and the same for the hover state. OK, just to differentiate the two. And next, I'm just going to change the text. So it's going to be container bottom so we can identify it. OK, let's save our work. OK, next, I'm going to collapse all the containers. And this time, I'm going to select the container one block. 
then go to the layout tab make sure the content width is set to full width and then where it says minimum height you want to select vh type 100 then you want to go into tablet mode and this time still with vh selected you want to type 50. And it's going to be the same thing for the mobile so you can leave it like this okay so let's go back into desktop mode and let me zoom back out and then for flexbox the direction should be set to vertical justify content should be set to end and the same for align items should be set to end that's for the desktop version now let's go into the tablet version this time it should still be set to column vertical the justify content should still be set to end but the align items should be set to start and the same goes for the mobile so you can leave it like this okay let's go back into desktop mode next you want to click on the style tab then click on slideshow in my case or you could pick classic put a color or an image but in my case i'm going to use a slideshow and select the images you want to add to the slideshow so i'm going to add those two click on create a new gallery insert gallery make sure infinite loop is set to yes the duration should be 5000 and then you want to scroll down and where it says Ken Burns effect, you want to select yes. Click on update. Next, you want to click on advanced and where it says margin, you want to type zero all around and it's going to be the same for tablet and mobile. And then where it says padding, you want to unlink the values and in desktop mode is going to be zero, 60, 80 and zero. Then select tablet mode, unlink the values and this time is going to be 40. 40 60 40 then go into mobile mode and link the values and this time it's going to be 0 20 40 20. okay let's go back into desktop mode next once again you want to click on the widgets icon drag a heading into the container one block and add a button just underneath the heading now you can't really see the text here because it's blue on blue Okay, so I've styled the text and the button, but feel free to do as you wish. Click on update. Okay, now let's take a look at what we've built. So as you can see, looking beautiful. We got both our subcontainers here and the main container on the right hand side. But I don't know if you can see it. Let me zoom in. There's a thin line here. And this is something I've noticed with Flexbox or maybe it's a bug. I don't know yet. I'm not talking about Flexbox in general. I'm talking about Flexbox within Elementor. So just to fix this, let's go back and we're going to select container one block. And if you recall, the percentage is 67%. And then for the first subcontainer, it was 33%. That should equal to 100%. But for some reason, the trick here is to just make it to 68%. Then click on update. Now let's go back. Let me zoom in. Let me refresh. I don't know if you can see it because it's really tiny and now it's gone. So that's the trick. And for the rest, it's looking good. Okay, next, this is our tablet version. So as you can see, all containers are stacked, which is what we wanted. The main container is 50 VH and then each of the sub containers are 25 VH. And then onto our mobile version. So same thing. It's all stacked vertically and it's looking beautiful. Now, like I told you, in just a few clicks, we can create new layouts. Okay, so let's go back to the Elementor editor. And because we've changed the container one block to 68%, we have this weird white line here. But fear not, save your work, refresh the page, and voila. Okay, next, I'm going to expand my container, go to container one block, go to style. And just for the time being, because it's distracting, I'm going to turn off the infinite loop and turn off the Ken Burns effect. Click on update. Okay, let me collapse my container and I'm going to call it main container A and then right click and duplicate it twice. And let's rename these main container B and main container C. Okay, let's pick main container B. So with this, container selected i'm going to expand it and then click on container two blocks and then on the layout tab this time is going to be 50 percent then container one block once again and this time is going to be 50 percent let's make it 51 percent if we don't want to have the same issue we had earlier on and just so that you're not confused i'm just going to click on the little i for main container a and main container c 
So the only thing we see is main container B, which is what we are focused on at the moment. Now, of course, you wouldn't put all these three main containers on the same page. Well, you shouldn't have to. More than likely, they would each be on their own page. But just for the sake of this tutorial and to go faster, I'm doing it all here. OK, next, we want to click on the container two blocks. Then on the layout tab, you want to change the direction to horizontal row. OK, great. Now we want to expand the container two blocks, select container top. And then for the minimum height is going to be 100 VH. And for the container bottom, you want the same thing. Now let me collapse main container B. Let me put it here on top. OK, so now when I hit preview, as you can see, we got a completely new layout in just a few clicks. OK, but let's go back. Of course, you want to make sure that it works well in tablet mode also. So you want to expand main container B and then you want to click on container two blocks. And then where it says direction, you want to select column vertical. And now it's back right in order. And if we click on the mobile, as you can see now, it's all working good. OK, great. So let's collapse everything. And this time we're going to mute main container B. We're going to drag main container C at the top and unmute it. Let's go back into desktop mode. And once again, with just a few clicks, we're going to completely change this layout. So first of all, we want to click on column reversed. And OK, it's looking weird now, but don't worry about this. So we want to expand the main container C that where it says container one block. You want to give it 100 percent of width and then click on container two blocks and give it 100 percent. So it's still looking like nothing happened, but it did. So click on update and just refresh the page. OK, looking better. We still have some tweaking to do. So once again, let me mute B and A and let's focus on main container C. So with our navigator open, just expand main container C. Let me zoom back out. Let's select container one block. And then where it says minimum height, we want to give it a minimum height of 60 VH. OK, and now we can see the container two blocks here at the bottom. So we want to expand container two blocks. Let's select container top. And let's give it a minimum height this time of 40 VH. And let's do the same thing for container bottom, 40 VH. OK, but it looks like there's something wrong. We see they are stacked, but we, you can see them all on the same screen. So let's select our container two blocks and then let's go into the Flexbox options. And we want to change it from column vertical to row horizontal. And now you can see, you can see everything on the same screen. So let's click on update and now let's hit our preview. And as you can see, it's looking beautiful. Now let's take a look at how it looks in tablet. So let me change to tablet mode. And once again, we have some tweaking to do. So expand main container C, then select container two blocks. And this time we want to go back to column vertical. And now it's looking great. And here is the mobile version. Let's save our work. OK, and from there, you can style it the way you want. OK, so this was our first layout. And this is the same with my own styling. Next, we have our second layout. And this is it, styled to my own taste. And next, our third layout. And this is the styled version. So as you can see, we went from this layout to this one and then this one in just a few clicks. Then for all versions, we have a stacked layout for the tablet and the same goes for the mobile. Now, at the beginning of this video, I also talked about this beautiful full screen navigation. So here we have our custom call to action. And then when you click on menu, you get this beautiful full screen navigation all made with Flexbox. Now, this video has already been long enough, so this tutorial will be covered in the next video on the channel. So depending on when you're watching this, it might already be there. And of course, you find the link in the description below. Now, if you enjoyed this free tutorial, please give it a thumbs up because it's really going to help the channel. And if you want more web design goodness, make sure you subscribe and smash the notification bell so that you don't miss anything. If there are any topics you'd like me to cover on the channel, please let me know. I'm always on the hunt for new ideas. And don't forget, I'm trying to build the content that I wish I had when I got started. So I'll see you in the next one. And until then, take care and stay safe.